Well, this is what I normally sound like, but unfortunately in this video, I had some unexpected audio issues, so my voice is crunched down to the tiniest of bits. Um, videos will return to their normal, silky smooth audio after this one. All right, Pipe Spaghetti, you're gonna have to go. Welcome back to Vault Hunters 118. In this episode, we are gonna be doing a build. Yes, I know, I never build, I don't. I don't like to build, I'm very bad at building, but I have an idea, and we just, we, we need to get our mechanism and power supply stuff out of here. It's on the path to replacing our uh, simple storage network with refined storage, because those frame drops, I'm pretty sure, because simple storage is a very laggy mod, and um, we need to actually make a new power grid, but we just have no space for any power or any power grids. So, I'm going to be taking... This area over here, I'm thinking possibly, I'm thinking like this area over here, uh, and turning it into a giant crater where a space station has fallen from the sky and crash landed right outside our base. And that is where all of our mechanism and power production stuff will go. Um, it's going to be super cool. And I think I'll like use TNT. Right? I have an idea of like drilling holes in the ground and using TNT, and hopefully that makes a shape similar to a crater. But first I gotta clear out some trees and like mark down where I want this thing to go. Okay, so this is around about the area that I'm thinking we should cover with the crater. Now I know this isn't like a perfect circle, but I don't think it has to be a perfect circle, considering I'm mostly gonna be blowing this up with TNT. And this is more so just to mark down where I want to put the TNT, right? And I'm thinking the way we do this is like every, I don't know, two blocks or so in this like grid pattern, we'll dig down and fill these holes with TNT. So like on the surface, there's going to be like one TNT, but here in the center, we're going to dig down further. I say, I don't know, maybe, maybe five blocks deep of TNT in the center and then come out, this would be four blocks, this would be three blocks, this would be two blocks, and then we'll like rim with, with single TNT? That that sounds like it should work. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go craft up, I don't know, like two stacks of TNT or something. We're so rich with gunpowder and sand, it's not going to be a problem. I mean, just look at our... Hopefully there's no creepers up here. Cool. Uh, just look at our gunpowder supply. Oh my gosh. And over here with the ghasts. Ah, we have so much. So exciting. Cool. Stack 30... Oh, stack 47. Should be fine, to be honest. And you know what, while I lay down this TNT, why don't you guys go watch a clip of me finding our third treasure room? Well, 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 another door and another nether vault. What is it with nether vaults and being the ones where I find all my treasure doors in, huh? Ba, 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 ba. Alrighty, looting set on, treasure door opened. Hello, my bombing night treasure room. What you got for me? Ooh. <laughs> Not bad. We have a rune, a dragon rune. Nice. Oh, Laramar. Yes. And Omega Shield, huh? All right. Not a bad haul. This dragon rune room is going to be cool. The Laramar. Oh, thank you. And of course, Omega Gear. Also, this is an old note. Let's see. Um, Reviving my spirit for more than 189 gold should let me open death's door. Huh. Okay. Well, spirit reviving isn't something you can actually do in casual mode, so we'll have to turn off casual mode once we even have 189 gold to burn, but now we know that's the thing. And let's get our gear rolling, our second piece of guaranteed Omega gear. Wow, those are some cool looking shields. Inferno shield, how does that look? Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. interesting with the current armor. Doesn't really work with the current armor, but it does look really cool. 8% resistance, health, um, I can't seem to get rid of Thorns damage, no matter what I do, it always rolls Thorns damage, but uh, a little bit of Knockback Resist and Healing Cloud? That's a pretty good replacement for this guy. It's 1% less block chance, but that resistance is going to be pretty nice. Alrighty, time to retire you. Well, this either looks like something that's going to go completely and utterly and horribly wrong, or something that's going to look super cool. The only thing I'm really nervous about is if... Like, the TNT detonation goes so far to blow up, um, our tower? I don't think it would. 
I mean, I feel like it's mostly going to be contained by the cobble ring. But, um, I don't know. Maybe it would be smart of me to build up one so there's like a bit of a wall in case the TNT goes flying upwards. I think I'm going to do that. I really do not want to have to try to rebuild that. So I'm just going to quickly and dirtily just build one up so to encase the TNT. Well, that's that, I guess. It's stunning on me how much of a very permanent decision this is. Okay, but we're going for it. I Hopefully this turns into a really cool looking crater. Whoa! Okay. Okay. I think that worked kind of pretty well, actually. Yeah, this is very crater-esque. <laughs> nice! Okay, let me just clear out the cobblestone so we can really get, like, an assessment of what we're looking at and any floating blocks like that guy. Oh, the rain is just killing my frame rate. But I think the crater looks... I mean, it looks pretty cratery. Yeah, this looks good. I like how this looks. I think it just needs a little bit of cleanup. Getting that out, getting these out. Bringing this area just down a little bit. Hmm, yeah, okay, okay. I'm going to go and do a little bit of cleanup. And get back to you when I'm pretty much happy. Okay, I think I really like how this looks. I like the kind of wall that formed over here. Because it almost gives the impression that, like, the comet came streaking from this way. And struck here. Like, I'm bedding itself into the ground here. Right? So the explosion most like boom, kicked out this way. All the blocks and stuff kicked this way, which created this little like mound right here, right? Um Yeah. I like this. I like this. It even kind of looks like it might have split open this cavern system over here too. Ooh, who knows? But I think this works for the crater. Now we need to build our asteroid slash comet slash whatever it is. Um and get the entrance into the lab that was on the inside. So for building this thing, I don't know. We're going to need to use some black blocks. I'm thinking we got those flint blocks that we used back in the Create Factory that I like very much. They look pretty cool. There's blackstone. I want to throw in some magma. Hmm. Oh, I feel like coal looks good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coal is the right one. Okay. So I'm going to make a bunch of coal blocks. We have a ton of coal, so it won't be a problem. Man, my frames are horrible right now. Uh, is it simple storage? I bet it's simple storage. Okay, we have an orb. The orb is complete. Honestly, I, it looks pretty cool. I might try to texture it, though, with some black stone, maybe? See if that could give it a little bit more depth, because right now it, it is just a very kind of black void. Right, but I'm glad that it's got some flat spaces because I think I'm going to use it as like it's an entrance to the space station. Yeah, I think texturing it with blackstone looks really cool. Yes, sir. Let's keep that up. There we go. That gives it a lot more depth, I feel, actually. Yeah, that gives it... Oh, that, that, that just took it from like a 5 to like a 7, I'd say. That looks good. All right, now I want to fill in the ground underneath it so that it's not kind of just floating there. So I got to grab some stone and just kind of fill in the space and really make it look like it's like embedded and nestled into the ground. Okay, there we go. Now it looks a whole lot less like it's floating in some places. Nice. Um, okay. Uh, what next? Well, I guess the crater could definitely use some decoration. Like this should be closed off. You don't want to see down there. And maybe, uh, oh, no dirt. Thinking, spread some coal blocks, like veins of coal blocks, magma blocks, and fire pits. Fire pits, that's what they're called. Fire places, fire campfires, and campfires to get some smoke going. Okay. Yeah, that. That definitely helped. Yeah, I think this looks pretty cool. All right, now we need the entry into the space station. 
Um, so let's see. We have to get into our orb here. Let me actually move this down so it's just a little bit more of a straight path in. There we go. I'm thinking we'll knock out like these guys here and here. Yeah, there we go. Kind of like a, a, a hit, almost like a hidden entryway into this thing because it's so dark. Why did I? Yeah, okay. I like how that looks a lot. So then what we'll do is we'll have uh, one of these blocks needs to be an elevator block that's going to zip us down into the laboratory. Hmm. What looks, what, what's a very, what's a spacey looking block? They have something called a laboratory block. What is a laboratory block? How do you make this? Okay. How do these look? Oh, they look perfect. So then this is our elevator block that will zip zip up and down. Okay, cool. So now I actually got to go grab an elevator block and dig out an area, you know, big enough to begin building our laboratory. Okay, so I'm going to skin that nice to our chrome. And uh, zipping downwards, we come into a small room where I have made a little clearing. And this is going to be the entryway into D. Jojo Labs. Oh, this is this is working out really well. Okay, I just realized there's absolutely no way you can see anything down here. Uh, it's pitch black dark in there, and it's just a dumb, like, stone hole. But, okay, I am going to spend some time and build up the laboratory um i'm slow at building so i'm just gonna kind of zip to at least when the entryway is done and yeah i'll see you hopefully soon hopefully not three hours later and i'm sad and defeated uh but we'll see okay i've got a little design Ta-da! it's super simple right now but what I want to do eventually is add in, like, windows here and put facades of, like, outer space or something. I, I don't know how I would do that. Um, but I want to see if that's possible because I think that'd be super cute to make it actually look like you were, you know, up in space. But, yeah, this is – it's very simple. I like the segmentation, and I'm thinking basically it. I want this to almost look like a, like a mine shaft. Or this is, like, the main room, right? And, you know, we'll have room, a room here, and that branches off into more rooms, and a room over here, and that branches off into more rooms and stuff. And, yeah, the only thing left to do is to move everything. Yep, our whole mechanism set up, and all of our power generation needs to be moved down in these, uh, these, uh, these halls of ours. So, yeah, before we do that, I want to do something I've been meaning to do for a long time, and that is make our power wireless. Yes, we can have wireless power in the mod pack, and uh, it is called uh, Ender Cell technology. So Ender Cells are really cool, and I want to make the Niotic one because that'll IO 100 FE per tick, which is a ridiculous amount. It's way more than we need right now, which I think is perfect. It'll last for a while. And all you need is some Niotic Crystals, Obsidian, and this Ender Core. And Ender Core is a little bit of Laramar Capacitor, Dielectric Casing, and this Ender Watcher. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to craft all this stuff up. We're going to energize our thingamajigs. And make a niotic cell. I already we have the obsidian and we have the niotic crystals, but I just wanted to show off how you make this ender core just so you guys knew what we're up to. I do love using the orb. It's just so simple and fun and it, it's a really cool way of using FE to craft. A props to the power developers for it. And here is our ender cell. But we are also going to need ender gates. Um and I don't know, should we use niotic for ender gates or I don't know. Um, I, Niotic Ender Gates pull 50,000 FE. So I guess we technically want to do a Spirited Gate, but that seems really expensive. Yeah, extremely. Okay, so the highest I would even want to do is a Niotic Gate, and even a Niotic Gate is going to be pretty tough because, what is this? That's two Niotic Crystals, um, six Niotic Crystals, and you need Blazing Capacitor. Hmm. That's pretty pricey, but I believe it would make four of these ender gates, which is nice. We'd have four access points. You know, I have to say, uh, niotic energy cables, it's kind of unfortunate. They're not as good as, um, they're not, I don't think, as good as the advanced ones, because advanced cables, yeah, they pull 51,000 per tick. 
where these guys pull 50,000 per tick. So this really is only for the Ender Gate, which does pull 50,000 per tick. So I suppose at the very least, we're bottlenecking at like the right rate. Oh, we have no obsidian. What? Okay, cool. We have our cell and our gates. Awesome. Now we just need to move all this stuff, which is basically just going to be unplugging this entire system. So no reason to dilly-dally or anything like that. This is the uh, additional room, and uh, this area here is going to be used for something super special, but that's a secret for now. Uh, let's get all of our power stuff back up and running. It'll be so much more organized and so much more nice. And eventually I'll have this as a niotic, but for now it won't be that. Uh, okay, cool. Those guys are going, and we'll get... Uh, our solar panel there, and we'll ender it up. There we go. These guys still have stuff in them. Very nice. Okay. So, our ender cell is going to go here. Right? You can see we have 0 out of 0 FE. That's because we need to add a energy cell to the system, which you shift right-click. No? Okay, I'm silly. It is shift-clicking like that. There we go. So, the ender cell has now sucked up the uh the fe on channel one if we go to channel two there's nothing so only channel one has anything and this is what the ender cell is currently accessing so now all of the power generated by these two guys right here is completely wireless all we have to do is place down these ender gates onto cables and it will be able to pull it out now i wonder can we place them onto like the advanced cables and stuff of mechanism or is it only like do we have to go from like mechanism cables to non-mechanism cables oh sweet okay so they can go on it perfect okay i was worried so we don't actually have to worry about using power cables we could just keep power cables for the stuff so power cables only are needed for crafting, but we can actually use our universal cables and stuff with our niotic ender gates or any other ender gates. Awesome. Okay, cool. So now what I'm just going to do is get the whole of my power setup back to so the orb, put that on the other side. Uh, yeah. Actually, I'll put the orb there. And Sir Energizing Rod. Oh, he can't attach to a wall. That'd be cool. Well, I'll put the Energizing Rod there for now. Doesn't have to be like the prettiest thing in the world. But that's pretty cool. We have fully wireless uh, buffer of 40 million FE. You can pull 100,000 FE per tick from this particular guy, which is perfect. Um, we're going to be pulling 50,000. So, yeah, no problem at all. Now, of course, the hard part. All of our pipes, spaghetti, and chemicals, and machines. I'm going to move them. I have an idea of how to make this look, uh, how to make it look nice. Um, it's going to take a lot of time though, and a lot of effort. So once again, I think I'm just going to do it off camera and you guys have already seen me set the system up once. I don't think you need to see me set the system up again. So in the blink of an eye, oh, whoa, I had the craziest dream that I finished the build. <laughs> yeah, it has been a good few hours. I probably could have gotten a full night's sleep in the time it's taken me to build this. Embarrassing as it is to admit, this has taken me forever. But I'm really proud of it, and everything works. Check this out. Into the space station. First new addition, space. Yes, there is now space in our space station. Using uh, some mechanical bearings from Create, you can see... We're now floating around in space with the stars behind us. <laughs> I think this looks super, super cool. I am proud of this. Um, I might uh, I might work on it more in the future. I don't know exactly what I would do, but perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. But at the moment, I'm really proud of it. And as you can see, it is done. Everything is hooked up. I even have our brine production inside of the space station. I thought it looked really cool. And um, only a few visible pipes, and I feel like I was able to make them decently aesthetic, you know, going into the ground. Yeah, everything is powered. Everything's functioning. I even tested it with some of our lead. Um, check this out. There's a, there's a frame chest here. Yeah, it's kind of cool, right? So you put the uh, smeltables inside of this frame chest. They get sucked up. 
run through the whole assembly line. You guys know how this works already. I don't have to go over it with you, but ultimately this is the build. Um, sulfuric acid production here, oxygen and hydrogen production here, hydrogen chloride production here, and of course the final assembly line. Whew. It is clean. It is nice. No more pipe spaghetti on the surface. Holy crap is there pipe spaghetti down here. Check this out. Check this out. If I go into spectator mode and jump down here, look at the pipe spaghetti. Look at all of the different pipes and cables and everything that I have running out and around and in and over. Oh my gosh, it is a logistical nightmare. But it is not our problem anymore because we can't see it and this thing is never moving. I am never, ever, ever moving this setup. It is here permanently. Oh, I'm proud of this, by the way. This is the um, gunpowder input for sulfuric acids. Cheeky little frame drawer. I like it. Ooh, pretty cute right there. <laughs> oh, I'm proud of this. I'm very, very proud of this. I really like the effect of the space station rotating. Actually, I was, I was nervous about how this would look, but it's pretty awesome. Oh, and this space pirate is pretty freaking tired. So that is it for this episode. I blew over a hundred Laramar. I blew over a stack of chromatic steel. We used so many resources making this, but it's so worth it. I love it very, very much. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, consider subscribing. It really helps me out. And I mean, come on. I built a space station. You got to subscribe. for the. It's, it's, it's a space station. I, I'm really proud of it. <laughs> I'm tooting my own horn here. I'm, I'm just... <laughs> I'm really proud of the space station, but thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, everybody!